For years, Arab countries were Israel's biggest enemies. But after Sudan's head of state met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Uganda on Monday, it's becoming clear there is a change of course in the Middle East. I have been told from the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia to the Emir of Qatar that uh, with their resources and their wealth and Israel's technology and brain trust, that together uh, the Gulf and Israel could develop uh, one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful economic region in the world. Oman is one of the first countries leading this change. Netanyahu visited the Sultanate back in October and met with the Sultan Kabusi bin Said. Israeli Prime Minister later claimed Oman will soon allow Israel's official flight company to fly in its airspace. The United Arab Emirates are also showing signs of getting closer to Israel. As the International Expo 2020 is expected to be held in Dubai in October, Israeli passport holders will be allowed in the country. Sources in the Emirates Foreign Ministry say this change of policy may continue after the exhibition. Other countries in the region are taking baby steps towards Israel, but are not making them public. Saudi Arabia Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman said openly back in April 2018 that he acknowledges Israel's right to exist, a departure for the desert kingdom. Two weeks ago, Israel's interior minister said Israeli citizens could enter Saudi Arabia for business reasons. I believe the first country will be the kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, the king, his majesty, has repeatedly shared with me uh, his uh, genuine, authentic desire uh, to see relations developed between the kingdom and the state of Israel. One of the main interests pushing Israel and different Gulf countries together is Iran and its proxies gaining dominance in the region, a course both Israel and Arab countries see as a clear and present danger. The as existentialist threat coming from Iran and as existentialist threat in terms of needing to transform the Gulf economically, these two are major, major factors that I believe is going to enable the Gulf to influence and impact both the Palestinians and the Israelis once and for all to come to a final resolution. As Iran is gaining influence in other countries in the region, Gulf countries may be more interested in building diplomatic ties with Israel. But the main obstacle to full normalization with the Arab world remains. The conflict with the Palestinians. And until Israel resolves this conflict, it's hard to imagine full normalization between it and the rest of the Arab world.